My name is Belares and this is Ruthless Review. Now, to continue this review with my minimalist conversationalist skills and even worse reviewing skills, we will dive into the movement mechanics overall. What I don't cover here will probably cover in other videos since I am doing the complete overview of all these four games. Cyberpunk elevators here are actually used to some degree, but just because the game forces you to use them and are just standard by all means, they go up, they go down, nothing really amazing, so zero points. So there are no elevators within Red Dead Redemption, since they are not really needed for the actual game, so zero points for that. Elevators in Warframe are just basic, generally short, here and there are some longer ones, but that is it. You go up and you go down, they are normal, so zero points. Now, elevators within Witcher 3 do not really exist, as far as I can remember without looking for them. I think there were one or two wannabe elevators, but the game is made so to not need elevators, nor I see any real need since you wouldn't be able to utilize them in the world as it is, so zero points. So, motorbikes or bikes in Cyberpunk move forward normally, you can do a wheelie on it, which is completely useless outside of just doing it, if you press it forward it slows down, completely useless too. Bike turning is also meh, it slows, arching too much, if you try to drift or U-turn with brake, bike completely slides off its rear tire. Unless you slow down exponentially, you can't really slide with it sideways like it was shown in the trailers. I'd expect you could do at least that, go under trucks, shoot while sliding, you know, have some actual stunts that you can do with it and to have the time slowed down for you and such like it does in Warframe, but outside of just driving forward and carefully turning left and right, it's just a normal vehicle, so I will give this minus one point. Now cars in Cyberpunk are a little bit better at driving than bikes, but just a little bit. You can do U-turns at higher speeds, bigger the vehicle slower it goes and better it is at controlling while driving but most vehicles have the worst possible controls in almost all of the games that i ever played and that is a lot the only good vehicle is the most expensive one that you buy with 150k creds i think it was it turns properly speeds properly slows down nicely but on ground terrain it's piss poor but that is expected. There are dirt cars that are good for ground terrain, but using them to turn around on concrete is like driving on the goddamn ice. You simply just lose all control the moment you touch left or right direction. But the saddest part ever is that you can't properly drift, nor can you burn tires while stationary, where you would move in circles. It's just improper vehicle control throughout the whole game. There is driving from third person and first person while you are inside the car. It might look interesting, but it's nothing like it would be in normal life, because your field of view is mostly obstructed when you're driving in the first person. Obviously not as it would be like when you sit in a real car. It looks more like a toddler driving instead of an adult. Same goes for bikes in first person and doing a wheelie just bad. But I will give this zero points since it's pretty much standard across the gaming spectrum generally. Now, boats in Cyberpunk do not really exist, at least not as a functioning vehicle that you could use, which is beyond sad since there are lots of large bodies of water that could have been utilized for proper and awesome water fun. And it would have added so much good to the game, so minus one points for this lack of a possible awesome mechanic. 
So vehicles in Red Dead Redemption are generally bound to horses, but there are boats a little, trains, which I will exclude here since I will rate them in the next video, but horses first. So a horse is walking is normal as it should be, like an actual horse would walk in real life. Galloping is also as you would expect it to be, it actually looks proper. Movement on a horse is actually different while walking on the ground, which is slower, and road or beaten path, which is much faster. And you can ride it in the first person, and it does look proper. Your field of view is not as obstructed, and it functions as it should. It's not as obstructed as in cyberpunk driving cars or the bike. Uh, horses can jump over things, can climb slopes or level ground. Uh, it slows down as you climb up, can slip and fall down if you gallop downwards, has mind of its own where it won't jump off the cliff, but you can force it to do so. While running through the city or cobblestone, that is, the sound is also proper to it and differs when you walk on wood, stone, dirt and such, so the audio works as it should. Horses have fear levels here and you can calm them down, but if they scare too much they will throw you off, obviously. While having fear level you can gallop into the obstacles where you will both try flying without wings, while without fear level it will generally avoid hitting trees and jump over fences and such, turn before hitting a wall and so on. Also, with higher fear level that your horse has, uh, faster you will gallop than normal if you're escaping some danger. Uh, then you can technically swim in the game properly and that is while riding the horse, which is quite, quite good at swimming and even more amazingly while swimming the horse gets cleaned while, while it differs if it's stale water and moving water where if you run or swim through the river horse horse will get cleaned faster and obviously in the still water it will get cleaned slower you also take care of your horse to some degree from time to time you need to feed it brush it and pet it so it would perform to its maximum which it would not reach if left dirty or hungry and you also level up your relationship with your horse, which boosts up its stats that can go to a certain height based on the race of the horse. So I will give this plus one points, since it is amazing and horses can shit and have balls shrinking in the cold. We can also put carriages as vehicles, you can have them with one, two or four horses, I think there are three horses ones also. And they work quite nicely, but nothing extraordinarily, but again, nice, so zero points here. Now there are boats in the game, uh, paddling one and steam ones, which generally outside of the quest and maybe fishing, you will never really find the need to use them, unless you're just messing around the world, so I will add zero points to that. Now vehicles in Warframe, they are not very useful for the most part. There is an archwing that you can use in other space, a few dungeon space missions, and of course, as we said, a few water dungeon missions. Of course, you can use them within open world maps, but again, most of the game is dungeon-like maps, which are fairly small for you to be using something like an archwing that, it, that generally is extremely very fast compared to anything else where you can use it properly in small spaces that are underwater since it slows you down quite a lot so we'll give this zero points for arch wings I mean it's it flies it's fast it's okay nothing special but no uh, can be fun nonetheless now there are also robots or necromashes which would not generally be used for any form of transportation since they're fairly slow and there are only two of them in the game as of now and they're generally the battle vehicles but nothing too special again just fun to have around and for some mission necessary part of them so I will give this zero points since they're pretty since they pretty much behave like much slower things. 
and probably the coolest ones are the hoverboards or K drives that are also completely useless for overall gameplay more useless than other vehicles they have no real functionality they exist generally only for fun moving around and you can use them within open world areas but nowhere else generally so i'll give this zero points because i will give plus later and now the only properly functional vehicle which is railjack a space flying fortress that actually looks amazing movement inside correlates to everyone every member inside the ship sees the proper movement from whoever drives it well you can also have an npc flying the ship and fighting while you do other stuff you can maneuver with it through tight spaces dodge stuff and bullets when you go outside the movement breaks a little bit and it's not as amazing but from the inside it's just one of the best technically functioning things in the game you can also have jobs for whole team flying shooting repairing depending inside of the ship engineering filling up the ship storages and so on amazingly one of the best functioning things in the game and you can also have a hangar for the railjack inside the dojo or you can access it from your personal ship behind the arsenal so through and through absolutely amazing so plus two points for this Roger. Now horses in the game, to very part only of course, are actually genuinely amazing. Walking is okay, running is also okay, but actually quite fast while you run and there is flying also. The flying is truly amazing, it, uh, it's actually what Hogwarts Legacy Animal Flying was supposed to be but never came to life. It's quick, animations and effects are amazing. Flying up and down is as you would imagine from a horse with wings to fly like. And it's much, much more fun to fly than with arch wings, so I will give this plus one point. And vehicles here is Roach. We could easily end it there, basically. It comes to you by spawning when you whistle, and it functions as any horse would. Walking is normal, the sound actually works properly while walking on concrete, on ground and on water. Galloping is normal, it works and looks normal. You have normal sprint and faster sprint that uses stamina. Horse has fear level that, different from Red Dead Redemption, you have a bar that shows you how much you have before the horse will get too scared and throw you off and run away. Same as in Red Dead Redemption 2, the horse will stay where you leave it on the map, but the difference is that you can summon it wherever you are and it will just spawn close to you, so you don't need to get close to it for it to run to you. Other interesting thing about horses in Witcher is that they are absolutely massive, much bigger than they should be, but look cool nonetheless. Well, there is no difference when horse walk on a different terrain outside the sound. You do slow down if you go uphill and can slide with it when going downhill. Horses can jump over obstacles, but that is about it. You cannot force it to jump off a cliff like in Red Dead Redemption 2. And the dumbest thing is that horse cannot go into the water and swim for whatever reason, which is very weird that they would not add that where a horse would just lose more stamina while sw swimming like in Red Dead Redemption 2. So we'll give this zero points. Now there are boats in the game also which are just meh. You sit, you unfurl the sail and move forward. If you hold sprint button you move faster because I guess you can create wind out, out of your ass. So I will give this zero points, I mean, turning is fine, speed is fine, movement is fine, it is just standard. Now shooting from vehicles is funny and okay. If you're shooting from third person it's somewhat functional. It has aim lock by default and it will generally hit enemy targets even if you shoot near them and not directly at them. But if you are shooting from a first person, oh man, oh man. From a car it might look cool and somewhat realistic but damn it is bad uh, it was simply not made to be used solo 
because the moment you turn away from looking at the road the road looks back at you and you learn that you can do road gymnastics by spinning and spinning around from bike it becomes actually funny because you start flying around since motorbikes are not glued to the ground like cars and you fly from time to time off the bike too the moment you look away from the road that's when everything goes off so I'll give zero points to this since it's okay and it is somewhat funny now shooting from a horse in Red Dead Redemption is okay it does not differ much from shooting on your own you're just higher and there is a chance that your horse can die which is not good and your movement is of course restricted since your horse gets scared too and you are easier target harder to hide and so on so basically hard difficulty gameplay and zero points now fighting from vehicles here is standard they are generally all weaponized vehicles necromashes are fully fighting robots railjacks is flying battle fortress you can shoot from k drive with secondary weapon from archwing if you're on the planet it is open world map you can use your normal weapons or if you're in space or underwater you use your archwing weapon that you've set up so zero points since it's just bland and normal fighting from top of the horse is pretty standard you swing the sword in the direction where the enemy is left or right which it does it harder if it's on the left it's not very effective but it does exist you can slam with horse into the enemies and make some small amount of damage you can use quick items like crossbow and bombs the only sign you can use is axie to hypnotize enemies or slow them down so zero points here for just basic mechanics and god damn it the stun slash parkour in the cyberpunk I mean, there are no stunts in the game. So I will from the get-go give this minus two points for the garbage lack of mechanics. I mean, Just Cause had stunts, Dying Light had amazing stunts, Mirror's Edge had them more than 15 years ago, Far Cry actually had better stunt availability, the goddamn Assassin's Creed is made for stunts and parkour. The fucking Dishonored is so stupidly better with parkour. I mean, it is nothing new, it exists for years, for decades, and they did the most piss poor job they could do with this game. So it actually kills me by how bad it is and it saddens me beyond comprehension. And now stunts. The fucking Red Dead Redemption 2 has more stunt options than Cyberpunk. You can jump onto trains while they are moving from stationary point, running or from a horse. You can jump off the train to your horse and you can jump from a horse to carriages and take control of them and it's actually amazing so I will give this plus one points for this brilliancy. And stunts in Warframe are interesting. The game is made to be a parkour like game. Now there is wall running, you can stick to the walls, climb the walls, jump off the walls and bolt to wherever you need to go. You can also slow down time uh, if you are in mid-air and you, and you hold the aiming button which has been added much later after the game beginning in 2012 and works absolutely amazing correlating to other players around you. You can jump over high stuff, slide under low stuff, spin jump through lasers and so on. There are of course the hoverboards which are exclusively made for stunts and just flying under quotation marks around the map while doing parkour stuff and looks amazing the better you get while driving it so I will give this plus one points for being cool. Now stunts inside the Witcher 
do not exist because whole movement mechanics are just basic so even any parkour imagination is out of the question you can jump you can climb a little vaulting over things is just jumping over them there is no flying wall running or being a spider pig so zero points thank you all few people for watching and listening and skipping through most of my videos as everyone keeps repeating like it's a new commandment like, share and subscribe and of course do not talk about Fight Club.